Next, uh, we will talk about more quantitative aspects of heat exchangers, analysis of heat exchangers. Okay. So this is our next topic. So in heat exchanger analysis, there are two methods. One is called log mean temperature difference method, log mean temperature difference method, difference method. It's abbreviated as LMTD method. The other approach is effectiveness NTU method. NTU stands for number of transfer unit. Okay, we'll talk about this. So now let's see what is, which equation, which one is, more, which method is more appropriate for, for which condition. LMTD method. So the LMTD method is convenient to use. Convenient to use when T in and T out for hot and cold fluids are known. So we know the temperatures of in and out for both hot and cold fluids. And this is basically a sizing problem. So we have a known T's and unknown area. So, so in this case, in LMTD, the objective is to select the heat exchanger that will meet that will meet the prescribed temperature requirements. So, for instance, you want to start with a cold fluid at room temperature 20 degrees Celsius and you want to be able to heat it up up to 40 degrees Celsius that will be used in a chemical reaction. So you specify inlet and outlet temperature for, for the fluids. So in that case the question is what kind of what size of heat exchanger do you need? So if this is a type of problem that you need to analyze, LMTD method is appropriate. In effectiveness NTU method, effectiveness NTU method, in this case, suitable to use when outlet temperatures are unknown. Outlet temperatures are unknown. So in this case, so you know, in this case, heat exchanger area is known. Heat exchanger size area is known. So for instance, you have an existent, existing heat exchanger in your plant and let's say if you use let's say 20 degrees celsius water to heat or to cool let's say 60 degrees celsius oil and you know the area and the outlet temperatures you don't know and if you want to know the outlet temperatures for a given area so this is basically the method that you would like to use so now let's let's focus on lmtd method Let's say for the simple situation, so let's say we can do this analysis for parallel flow, counter flow, and cross flow. So these are the three different flow configurations that we discuss. So let's let's see how 
they 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 work out. So in parallel flow, let's imagine we have a simple situation. We have let's use a different color here. So inner region and annular region, let's say, they are in parallel. So if we call this as uh, T called in, T hat in, outlet will be T called out, T hat out. Okay, so this is the idea, T called in to T called out. So if you plot the temperature profiles, so T hat in will be the highest temperature and it will gradually decrease. T cold in will be the coldest temperature. It will gradually increase. So T cold out. So we call this difference as delta T in, delta T out. So the delta T log mean in this case defined as, delta T log mean is defined as, delta T, let's call it, sorry, let's call this one and two. Delta T1 minus Delta T2 divided by ln Delta T1 over Delta T2. So it is always good idea to, whenever you are dealing with heat exchanger problems, it's good idea to plot this uh, this diagram so that you don't get confused what is what is Delta T1, what is Delta T2, okay? In LMTD method, we choose uh, we basically we also put an arrow here, so this is the direction of the flow. So same story if you want to if you have a counter flow. So we have counter flow here. Let's say flow direction is inside is to the left, outside is to the inside is to the right, outside is to the left. Okay. So in this case, the temperature profiles will look like this. So the hot in again is the highest, and it is going to be T hot out, and cold in will start from here, cold in will start from here, it's going to go out. So the directions of the T cold in, T cold out. And again, we define this difference on the left side as delta T1, and this difference is delta T2. So the definitions of delta T1 and delta T2 is different, but the calculation of delta T, delta T log mean from delta T1 and delta T2 is the same. So again, delta T1 is defined as T hot in minus T cold in. For the parallel flow, for the counter flow, it is defined as T hot in minus T cold out. Okay, so, but we'll be using the same equation for both cases after you define delta T1 and delta T2, okay? So I always suggest you to, when you are doing this in mini exam and in the final, please do make sure that you plot this diagram as a first step. So now after you have delta T log mean, you calculate heat transfer rate. Heat transfer rate is U times a surface area times delta T log mean. This is from chapter eight. So in our problems in the delta T log in the in LMTD method, what did we say? We said we know delta T, so that means I know delta T log mean. I can calculate this quantity. And I don't know the area. I know U. So if I know flow rates, so I can calculate Q is equal to M hot. Cp hat, delta T hat. That is also equal to M cold, Cp cold, delta T cold. So if you follow the internal energy, initial minus final for one side should be equal to final minus initial for the other side, okay? So make sure the signs are correct here. So delta T hat is so you want to make sure both of them are positive. So the 
hot side is going to cool down the cold side is going to heat up so just be careful with the sign in here but the magnitude is the same so if you know the flow rate if you know cp and delta temperatures you can calculate q so if you can calculate q if you already know delta t log mean from this equation and you know the overall heat transfer coefficient you can calculate as which is the goal in the lmtd method as is equal to q over u delta t log mean q could be calculated either from either of these equations and if you only know three of the temperatures you can calculate the fourth temperature from this equality as well because this this these two terms are equal to each other okay